Hello, I'm Gareth. I'm going to take you through how to use the AVCO inventory valuation method. So AVCO is short for average cost. And it's used in situations where perhaps we can't tell the difference between one set of units of inventory and another set of units of inventory. Now we've got our example here. So on the 1st of January, the business bought 20 bananas, so they received 20 bananas into the storeroom at 20 pence each. 5th of January, a second purchase of 30 bananas, this time at 30 pence each. So in total, they've got 50 bananas. On the 10th of January, they sell 40 of them. Now what if, when they sell those 40 bananas, they walk into the storeroom and all they see is 50 bananas? And they can't remember which ones were bought on the 1st of January, which ones were bought on the 5th of January. They're all jumbled up in a big pile in the storeroom. So to make the sale, they just grab 40 of those bananas without knowing or perhaps caring which ones originally cost 20p and which ones originally cost 30p. You can imagine they may not keep track of each individual banana. Well, we're after the same two key pieces of information as you'd normally be asked for here, we're looking for the cost of the issue. So what's the cost of the 40 bananas that they're selling? And then what's the value of the remaining inventory? Well, if they had a total of 50 bananas all jumbled up in a pile and they've sold 40 of them, they're going to have 10 bananas left. So what's the value of those remaining bananas? That's essentially their closing inventory at the end of the month. Well, we're going to do the calculations under... AVCO or average cost so we can set up a little table and if you've already worked through FIFO and LIFO this table will be quite familiar so I'm going to have a column for the date of each transaction a column where I can record the number of units either being received or being issued a column for the cost per unit of the bananas and then a column for the total cost of each transaction so on the 1st of January, we bought 20 bananas, so we've received 20 units. That's an increase in our inventory. That's at 20 pence, or 0.2 pounds per unit, and 20 bananas at 20 pence is a total cost of 4 pounds. 5th of January, we've bought another 30 bananas to take us up to the 50 bananas in total. Slightly higher cost per unit, increase in price perhaps with a little bit of inflation in the world banana market. Well, 30 bananas at 30 pence each is another £9 of cost, taking me in total to £13 of cost for the 50 bananas. And in fact, if I pause at that point, something you may already have noticed, if you have worked through FIFO and LIFO already, and we're now looking at AVCO, what you should notice is at that point, the figures are exactly the same under each of the three methods. Because we deal with receipts or, or purchases of units in exactly the same way, whether it's FIFO, LIFO or AVCO. Receipts are just added on. So we've added the 30 bananas and we've added the £9. So in fact, it's only when you make issues or when you make sales that things differ between the methods. And indeed, on the 10th of January... We've got our sale of 40 bananas, which as we can fairly quickly identify means that we do have 10 bananas left. So we've got 10 units. And again, if you've already done FIFO and LIFO, what you'll probably have noticed is that the units are the same each time. You can imagine the actual number of bananas doesn't change. It's the values and the costs that do differ depending on your uh, method. The challenge we've now got is that when we come to think about where these 40 bananas are coming from, so remember under FIFO, the first in was the first out, so the 40 bananas initially came from the purchase on the 1st of January. Under LIFO, the last in was the first to go out, so the first place we took the 40 bananas was from the purchase on the 5th of January. But under AVCO, we're saying, well, what if those 50 bananas are just completely muddled up and we don't know which ones are which? We don't know which ones cost 20p. We don't know which ones cost 30p. Well, if we don't know which are which, we have to use the average cost method. Now, the average cost method, in some respects, I think is simpler than FIFO or LIFO 
because we're not going to need to identify which units were 20p and which units are 30p. It's simpler than that. But it does require us to calculate one additional figure, which is literally the average cost per unit. You can see that when you're dealing with the 50 bananas we had just before we made the issue, some of them are at 20 pence and some of them are at 30 pence. If we therefore work at the average cost of the bananas, I would guess it's going to be somewhere between 20p and 30p. And in fact, if you look at the figures, there are more bananas at 30p. So in fact, I'm going to be guessing that maybe the average is going to be a little bit closer to 30p than it is to 20p because you've got more bananas at that higher cost. But that's what's sometimes called a weighted average. It's weighted by the number of units. Well, I'm expecting an average cost between 20p and 30p, but how do I actually work it out? Well, very simply, all we do is we look at the total cost of the 50 bananas and the number of units involved, and you just divide one by the other. So if our total cost is £13, and that relates to 50 bananas, well, what is that on average? Well, 13 divided by 50, I get that coming to 26 pence per banana on average. And in fact, you can see that is indeed between 20p and 30p, and it's a little bit closer to the 30p, isn't it? It isn't bang in the middle, because you've got more bananas at the slightly higher cost. So I don't know which bananas are 20p, I don't know which bananas are 30p, but I do know that on average all the bananas cost 26 pence per unit. And when we then work at the value of the issue, we're just going to use that average cost. So this is a simple bit, we don't need to break it down, we don't need to try and plot which bananas were 20p and which were 30p, we take the whole 40 units at this average cost because we don't really know which are which, and that gives me a cost of the issue of £10.40. £10.40 as the cost of the issue of the 40 bananas we've sold. Now that's the figure we would then compare to the revenue generated to identify what profit we'd earned. And again, if you compare back, if you've already done FIFO and LIFO, if you compare back, the figure we did, um, identified when we were doing FIFO for the cost of the issue was £10. The figure we got under LIFO was £11. So what you'll notice is Avco is somewhere in between because Avco literally is a bit of a halfway house between the other two methods that you, know, you can deal with. So the cost of the issue is £10.40. And then to work at the value of the remaining inventory, so the 10 bananas we've got left, well, in the usual way, when you deal with issues, you just knock off the units and you knock off the cost. So £13 less £10.40, I get that leaving me with £2.60 as the value of the remaining inventory. And as ever, you can double check the logic of your figure there. Now the idea with Avco is we're taking units out at the average cost, meaning we must be leaving the rest at the average cost. And the average cost is 26 pence per unit. 10 bananas times 26 pence is indeed £2.60. And in fact, if you compare that figure to your FIFO and your LIFO results, you'll again see it sits in between them. If I remember rightly, under FIFO, we got a value of £3 for the 10 remaining bananas. And under LIFO, we got a value of £2. So you can see Avco does literally give you figures that sit somewhere in between the other two methods. Well, I do hope you found that useful. Just a matter of lots of practice. See you soon.